Design sketching is something we take for granted, however, if you think back how much time and effort has been spent practicing the core skills of handwriting, we spend nothing like the same on the graphic skill. So, before we start, we'll identify the four P's. Paper is important, the size and proportion of this will vary over the course of it, but it should be sitting at an angle in front of the user, not parallel to the edge of the paper, whether you're left or right handed. The posture, sitting upright, a little old fashioned, but sitting upright so the weight goes to the chair, leaving your arm and pencil nice and light. The pencil grip, which will show three distinct different ways of holding the pencil, each support three different skills. The pressure, the weight applied through the arm to the pencil, gives different results. Managing the pressure makes this work, work much easier. So getting started with some design sketching, these are uh, taught and try to unteach some bad habits because we've all picked up bad habits earlier on, whether it's just having a go, or scribbling a rectangle round, or the most common bendy line. And this offers the excuse that I can't draw. Well, if we have some grips sorted out, for example, holding the pencil lightly halfway down in a sketch grip, we can practice that trying to move the pencil as straight as possible. Sometimes a little aid of a couple of dots might give you targets to work from. In other words, moving the whole arm, that's holding the pencil lightly halfway down in that sketching grip and trying to imagine the line before the pencil actually touches the page. That way we've got a, an idea of whether we're going to be successful or otherwise. The heel of the hand, this area here, is where the weight of the arm rests on the paper and slides back and forward. But all the movement starts at the shoulder, a fundamental skill. Somebody reckoned, uh, likened it to using bagpipes. I'm not too sure if that's actually accurate or not. Curved lines are common at first. Now, if we draw from the shoulder, we can get this three wrist, ar wrist elbow and shoulder movement, giving us a parallel or near parallel horizontal line across the page. Again, look, the page is held at that angle. Weight is nice and light. But to cheat, and we'll call them cheats, you can call them techniques if you want, for vertical lines is to do exactly the same thing simply turn the page through 90 degrees. The pressure we apply can be light. This little tickle test on the palm of your own hand will give you an idea how lightly we can press the paper on the paper. If you see here, even after that little test, how much lighter those construction lines, those light lines become. So whether we're making up a grid, or in this case, drawing two horizontal lines, turning the page, and drawing two vertical lines, giving us what we hope to be something similar to a rectangle. The trouble is those shapes aren't really visible at the moment. Now what we've done there is we've changed the grip. We're now holding the pencil much more uh, firmly down near the point, and it's giving the same pencil, it's giving us a, a firm, dark outline. Turning the page, as we did before, gives us a chance to draw horizontal and vertical lines, and we're going over construction lines. Those light lines are very important. There's a, a closer look at the pencil grip for outlining. Much further down near the tip, more pressure applied, more like a writing type grip, but the movement's got to be smooth. So again, practicing as in any skill, whether it's sports or music or dance, anything in life takes practice, at least to get competent and eventually good at those skills. So turning the page again, in this case we look at this little rectangle at the bottom, a little bit more measured in our movement, so we're stopping at the corners, our construction lines intentionally overlap, and we have corners that strike through each other. This time we're slowing down a little bit and we're trying to get, with turning the page, a, 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 a clean outline as a result of all this work. So back to the sketching grip, we can see here we've turned the page and we're going for parallel lines, whether we're moving the arm or turning the page as we do here to get the, the, the horizontal lines again. Bigger sheets, we can actually move the page a little bit more. We can see within that that we've got uh, a couple of rectangles. They're thinking about a sloping line, but we'll look at that in a minute or two. So we're now going to have to look at uh, firming. The pencil grip has just changed, but down near the point, we've got a clearly defined using four lines, we'd end up with a rectangle. Now rectangles can appear a little bit uh, not very interesting. However, later on we'll look at how we can change the proportion of the rectangles. At the moment we're just keeping them fairly consistent. Hold on a minute here. We've got another little uh, hint and a go. For a sloping line, all we do, same line, same technique, we just turn the page. So you can see what's happened here to add a little bit more interest to those rectangles. We're actually effectively taking a sloping line, at whatever angle you choose, and cutting a corner off. Now, some of you have noticed that when I firm this line in here, there's a possibility of firming in the triangle, the little bit that's been cut off. 
But in this case, I'm going for this bigger, what is it, a four-sided, five-sided shape. There we go. Now, looking at the hand there, we can see the sketch grip, we can see the outlining grip, and this new cheat number four, if you like, or technique number four, that's to render, to add colour. And we're going to use the side of the tip of the pencil. That's fairly important in this case. The grip looks kind of unusual in that we're holding the end of the pencil in the palm of the hand with the index finger, pointy finger, about halfway along that pencil. And we can vary the pressure on this pencil by pressing hard or less hard with the index finger. You might be able to see on your own hand a change in the colour of your nail. So there's a little look at that rendering grip, third of our three fundamental grips. Now, if we don't practice this, we can get some fairly common practice. So again, side of the tip of the pencil, holding it at the index, and holding it at a fairly shallow angle. If I increase the angle, I bring my hand up here, you can see the pencil line, well, it becomes a line. We're looking to get an area of colour off the side of the pencil. The more upright the pencil becomes, the more lined colouring in, if you like, something you might have done in the past, that technique becomes. So using the side of the tip of the pencil. You don't have to work inside. It may have been something you've been taught in the past for good reason in terms of control, but for this the colour can be applied and can actually go outside the edge. The soft use of this is really, really important. It's not something we do the hard, firm, tight hand grip. The rendering grip is light, almost tickling the paper again. So, try to go the longest length makes life a little bit easier for you. And remember, it's the heel of the hand, this part here, that takes the weight of the pencil the whole time. You should actually make a noise on your paper as you're going along. Sketching grip about halfway down. So let's go back to a little bit extra cheat on this rendering. We can go back to an outlining grip, and this time using the same coloured pencil, we add a green outline, or a blue outline, matching the colour of the, the render we've just done. What this does, it just defines the edge a little bit more uh, firmly. And if you can see a comparison between the one I'm just finishing off now and the one below, this extra coloured outline definitely adds impact to that drawing. So back to sketching technique, back to holding the pencil loosely halfway. And we're keeping it nice and light. We're looking at sloping lines, turning the page again, change the grip. Turning the page, we've now got an outline, we've constructed, we've built this shape up. It's maybe similar to ones you've drawn already, but each one of these shapes is unique. Take the coloured pencil, side of the tip of the pencil, and again, not doing too worried about overlapping, we're going for this soft, light render grip technique. Take the pencil again, and firming in just inside that line. It's getting fairly obvious now, but you can see how much turning of the page is involved in this. So working on a drawing board or something fixed can be a little bit more awkward. In fact, this is done on a sketch pad, which can be a little bit slower to turn. A single sheet of paper works much quicker. So, oh, now, cheat number six, curved lines. We tried to stop them early on, but in actual fact, a curved line, which is our second line technique, one of only three we're going to cover types of lines. We can go for these straight lines again. That was line number one. Line number two will be the curved line, and line number three will be circles. And that's it. The only three line types you'll need to ever draw. So I'm building up the basic rectangles to start off with. And this time, using the natural rotation of the wrist, acting like a set of compasses, I can put a curve. You can see my hands not really moving. My wrist or elbow are fixed to the table to get these curves. And at the moment, at random, just trying different ideas out, I'm putting some curves through the object. I've now got to change the grip and turn the page so we're onto the outlining grip. Taking a little bit more time, stopping at the corners, more pressure on the pencil tip, and we get that clean outline. There are some simple rules when we come to make things, and one I would suggest at this stage is that external curves, bulgy curves coming out the way as opposed to ones that go in the way, are easier to manufacture. So at this case, at this stage anyway, I'm going to try and concentrate on external curves, curves that blow out the way. Okay, so we've now got uh, three fairly unique and different curves, shapes, same technique. Oh, 
bring the tip of the pencil round, in this case using the side of the tip of the pencil, swap the colour this time, and it's again keeping within it, it can go over the edges. I'll do the outline on these a little bit later on, I think. Again, try and go for the longer length, it makes it easier to, to work, so sometimes turning the page helps. Then that same technique of going inside the coloured outline inside, that's inside the black line you've already produced, with the same colour pencil and working our way around the edge. So if you look across this page, you can see from some original straight lines to shapes, shapes with straight cuts, uh, shapes with curved cuts, uh, using the render technique, the outlining technique, and this construction light line technique. So there again, on the side of the tip of the pencil, go for the longest distance is always easier, means you've got fewer strokes to make. In this case I've left some white in there, looking a little bit like a reflection, possibly of a material that's got a high gloss finish, or a material such as acrylic. And we can look at those sort of rendering techniques a little bit later on. So, turning the page, as you can see, happening all the time. Difficult to demonstrate this on a blackboard or a whiteboard because they don't spin quite so well. So there we are. Shapes using the three grips, the sketching technique, the outlining grip, and of course the rendering technique. In total then, there are three lines you'll use. Straight lines, keeping them straight, so we check earlier on. Curved lines, we've seen how the natural wrist movement helps with that. And the third one, the circles. We're going to look at those three line types. Uh, we can sketch just about anything. So the next video, hopefully, a little bit on circles. Hope that helped.